as individuals, we are strong, but as a community, we are powerful. Tell me what you need, and I'll do what I can. Who are we? MSI! Who are we? MSI! Who are we? What's up, familia? You already know, my name is Alan Ruelas, your host with the most. This is Get Going with MSI, and of course we have a phenomenal guest, and I just want to let themselves introduce. Hi everyone, I'm Oscar Garcia. I'm a theater technician, directing student with the Department of Theater and Dance. I've done many things with the department, from technical direction, scenic carpentry, directing, um, doing embracing sound design and lighting design. Yeah, so I think that for today's episode we have a load of questions and most definitely the first one that we always start off with to me It's important to always check in and this is forever and ever an important topic for me. How are you doing? I'm doing good like um, All the shows that I'm working on they're going pretty steady uh, Right now with the play that I'm directing we're on a good start um, We're starting the second act of the show and then with another one that I'm working on uh, Designs came in, they're within budget, and like I'm already in the process of like getting those blueprints ready for the team. Well, that was a very good answer. Now, how are you really doing? Let's talk about your mental health. Oh, my mental health? Uh, it's been pretty steady, you know, like most of the time I have like a work-life balance, so most of the time like when I'm done doing certain things, I just go home and decompress and just take the time to get the day started. So I'm so in terms of my mental mental well being, it's it's really it's really it's at, it's at ease. It's at ease. Yeah, I like that. I know that we're gonna talk about this because this is something that we want to highlight. Obviously, being a producer, you know, wrapping around that concept and you know what that pressure feels like. They say pressure builds diamonds, and I know that you have a lot to share for us, and I really want to get that rolling. But one of the questions that I want to start off with today, uh, specifically, is why join MSI. So when I was in high school, I was like applying to a lot of scholarships and I was putting all my chips into Cal State Fullerton and I didn't know really much about the school itself. Like my sister was already um, a second year there. So she kind of gave me the gist of like what kind of opportunities are out there. Mm -hmm. And she sort of introduced me to MSI because um, she was friends with one of our other brothers that have graduated already. And she encouraged me to apply for it, and and I well I didn't apply for it immediately. I was like reading the mission statement and all those things, and I was really drawn by the statement itself and the whole idea of brotherhood and community and um, just breaking barriers. And that's something that I wanted to be a part of. And so I immediately applied and worked really hard to be a part of this program. Yeah, I think that that's a very good question from Roberts. I think that when it comes down to why joining, there's different reasons for everyone. And I think that today that's a very valuable question because we see you, but you're busy. And that's a very good thing, y'all, because when you're busy, you know, you ain't got that much time. So the fact that you're making time for us today, well, first yeah. and foremost, thank you as an interviewer. And then second of all, we're going to get to um, <laughs> kind of like onions. <laughs> we're going to get through the layers, you know? <laughs> yeah. So the next question here is by Brother John, and it actually connects with what you're referencing right now. Um, Brother John is asking if you could start your experience again here at MSI, uh, what would you change? Is there anything you would do differently? Good question, John. Good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know for a fact that like there are certain opportunities I missed out on because, you know, like uh, when I started this major, like it keeps me very busy. But at the same time, like being a commuter student at the time, I couldn't really commute on my own. I didn't get my license until like my second year in college. So if I were to do something different, it would have been probably like trying to figure out other ways to be more active. Like, um, but other than that, like there are things that we can't control. I mean, there's nothing that I wouldn't change because, you know, I'm really happy with the connections that I made with the people I meet. Uh, so I'm like really happy like where I'm at like in relation with MSI and you know if something were to change I'm not sure where that would lead me so I'm really happy with where I'm at. Very nice. I think MSI is um, usually I ask these questions at the very end because it's something that you know is pivotal but when I do see you it's always a good time and when we went to the gym I'm like MSI brother 
I got you. I'll start you on that rack. But I think that when you're saying things about like, you know, if you were to change things differently, the obvious, I would opt for ideally, I just say I wouldn't change anything. I would just keep it as is. The only thing I will say is kind of like really emphasizing um, maybe trying to find apartments around the area because commuting is a whole mission. Oh, yeah. It's a whole hour. It's everything in between. And it's just like a little bit troublesome, if you will. You know, I won't get into the depth of that because, you know, we could obviously find reasons as to why commuting wouldn't be ideal rather than staying somewhere and you're enjoying yourself. So, I mean, one of the conversations that I really wanted to emphasize with you is what you're doing. I say that because students, brothers, obviously have career paths, obviously have majors, and people like yourself, you know, you're taking the initiative to do production in this case. Uh, so one of the questions that Eric has here is tips to finding a work-life balance, but at the same time, talk to us about theater. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, I do a lot of things with the Department of Theater and Dance. Um, some days, like, I work as a carpenter there. Other days, I, um, during my mornings, I'm usually the, the technical director or the TD, where my job is to, where my job is basically the designer, like the scenic designer comes in with their concept, and I try to negotiate the best way possible um, to see like if it's doable, if we're in budget. So there's that aspect. And then at nights I direct a show. Uh, so there's a, so I do, a, and there's more to that than just the, that's just the surface level. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do a lot of things with, with the theater. Uh, and it sometimes can be a little overbearing because like all my days are like booked by the minute. Of course. But what I always try to do to keep that work-life balance is like I always try to reserve like one day of like out of the week to not do as much work, not mm -hmm. to be in so many meetings. It's mm -hmm. just like I'm only there to be in my classes and attend to my mandatory things like rehearsals. Um, and then when I finish the day, I just and I tell my actors this and I tell everybody that I work with is that I just leave everything behind. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like to take my work with me at home. I don't like to think about it for an hour. I don't really like to think about it at all. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like I also just have like these strict boundaries where it's like on Sundays, I don't want to do any work. Like I don't work at all on a Sunday with theater. I spend time with my family and I spend time with friends over the weekend. Um, so I always try to find like those moments where I'm like, if I have nothing to do that day, then I'm not going to schedule anything in that day. And I'm just going to leave it as that and just carry on with my life. Nice. So I have two questions. Why theater? And has there been a time where you needed to reinforce your values and be like, hey, Sunday, no amigo or amiga, you know, this is just my day. Yeah. Um, so I chose theater because it was exposed to me like when I was very little in elementary school. Like we had this like little drama club, and the first show I did was like this really interesting version of like Schoolhouse Rock. Um, and I, and I just kept doing that throughout like a good sum of my life. In junior year, my junior high years, I didn't do anything. I was just there to just take classes. But in my high school, that's when I was more involved. I, I had a performance background, so I did some acting, I did some dancing, like, like musicals. I'm not a really big fan of musicals. I don't... I don't Hairspray? Oh. oh my gosh, no. Continue, but... Oh, that's like, like, I don't like to perform for musicals. Okay, that's okay. Oh. Like, I'll see some, but not all. Like, like there's very little that I've seen, but... Um, so I did have like a performance background and when I came here to Castle Fullerton, like mm -hmm. I still wanted to pursue performance, um, but like, you know, with the whole COVID thing and everything, it just kind of derailed. And so um, I reevaluated what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And and I was always fascinated with the concept of main, like, you know, designing and like building and all that stuff. And so mm -hmm. I embraced that area and and that's where I, that's where it led me to where I am today. Like I'm really happy that I'm able to work on these various shows mm -hmm. um, in with different hats, with different roles, and just seeing the process of the show going. Mm -hmm. um, so I 
did theater primarily because I enjoy the collaborations with people, I enjoy the collaborations with performers, with designers, with mentors. Um, but I also love to tell stories. Like, there's so many stories out there that are waiting to be like put out on the stage that isn't always just just Shakespeare or just, you know, like what we see all the time. Like mm, there's I like this. There's always a different story that I've that I um Where's my business card? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's always a different story that I find like that comes along like that comes to my table that I never heard of and I get really excited to read it. For sure. I mean I would ask if you could follow up with the second question, but I don't want to lose my trail of thought. Can you forget about that question? Can you talk to us about your most upcoming production? If does that make sense? Your your production that you're doing right now that's yeah. coming. So elaborate. Let us know. Showcase it. Make it look like a nice taco. You know, you add like your carne asada. You add your cilantro. Your this is you're like making it yours. So yeah. I want to know it. And I for context, I love tacos. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. So there's two shows that are coming up that, that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is my directing debut of um, Real Women Have Curves by Josefina Lopez. Mm -hmm. That will be coming out in March mm -hmm. 22nd at the Santa Ana Theater, um, known as the Grand Central Theater in mm -hmm. Santa Ana. And, um, and the second show that I'm working on is Fefu and Her Friends over at the Alumni House. That will be oh, that will be opening in April after the spring break. Uh, I don't have the dates for those yet. Like we do have like the dates on the website. I just don't have them on the top of my head. Um, but those are the two shows that I'm working on, uh, and I'm really excited to be a part of those two shows because like, you know, with um, Josefina with Josefina Lopez being Mexican American, I think, um, well being Latin, and with. My Maria Irene Fornes being Cuban American, like being a part of these two shows that like emphasize um, a part of like my identity is something that I'm really happy to be a part of. Um, and the people that I work with are just as excited to be a part of something like that as well. Um, more specifically, I'm more excited for the show that I'm working on because uh, the cast works really hard, the team works really hard. Um, and we're all just having a good time. We, we, we have our moments of laughter, we have our moments of working hard, but at the end of the day, like we put in like our 100% each night um, trying to get the job done. And surprisingly, we're like usually ahead of schedule, which is something that's like completely unknown in the theater yeah. to yeah. be yeah. ahead or on time. <laughs> so but, it's scary. Yeah, <laughs> but I think the beauty of it is the fact that like, I can tell that with my actors, they, they, they come in and they're excited to be in the space. It's not like a, another job or another responsibility where they'd be like, oh, I have to be there again. Like, oh, it's like, great, I get to be with the people I enjoy working with. And it's just a lot of laughter and that's, and that's what I enjoy working. All right, for context, y'all, because I want this to get in our brains, can you say the two productions and then the, the first one with the date and then the other one just hover over it one more time? Yes. <laughs> so the first show that's coming out is Real Women Have Curves by Josefina Lopez. Mm -hmm. um, it will be opening on March 22nd, um, from the 22nd of the 22nd and it closes on the 25th and they're all at 8 p.m. Um, and that one's in the Grand Central Theater in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second show that I'm working on is Fefu and Her Friends at the Alumni House. Uh, that one's going to be in early April. TBD, to be determined. Yeah, it's in early April. The, the dates are confirmed, it's on the website. I just don't have it in my No, of course. So one of two things, everybody. This is um, a pivotal moment, if you will, because you're taking an initiative. And I think that I would even opt for encouraging brothers to attend. I feel like it would be so great to see you, obviously doing your business, um, because everyone's craft is very honorable in their respective ways. So that's the first thing. That's my call to action to everybody, you know? I yeah. think that it's important to show that support, whether it's through a message, whether it's through a actual post, or attending in person. So I say that because my idea of pressure, you know, you're doing so much and, you know, I think that 
when it comes down to like broadcasting and things that you know my endeavors I definitely see with what you're doing just in a different role you know pressure is pressure and it builds diamonds and to me the idea of getting production done is one two three and like you said meeting those deadlines is a little bit unheard of and I say that because it takes it takes a lot yeah. so you know toodles to that so I just wanted to ask you with that being said um, the topic of pressure. Um, what helps you focus when you're doing your work? Uh, it's actually kind of different. It depends on what I'm doing. Like sometimes, like if I'm doing drafting, like drawing the blueprints for shows, like I usually like to work in a quiet space or like in a corner and mm -hmm. I just listen to music and that's what keeps me focused. If I'm doing like design work, like sound design, or set design, or anything that's like design related, like I usually like to work around people who kind of are in that same energy per se um, and so like just working in front of someone who's also working keeps me busy as well and if I'm stuck on something I just kind of spitball the idea of being like hey does this sound silly and I'm like no that sounds reasonable like you know um, and other times I just you know like I just work somewhere different where it's you know, sometimes I get bored of working in the same place, so then I just end up working elsewhere where it's like, okay, this is a different environment, and it somehow makes me, helps me focus better. So it's always just like finding the right place and the right time. Um, I try to avoid like going out like a, like a coffee shop or a taqueria or like uh, anywhere that's food because like then I just want to eat food and just watch, you know, TikToks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I always try to keep myself within the range of like other people who are working. You, talk, you talked about, um, I think you said energy or vibe, one of yeah. those two. So I myself include myself in that spectrum. I just got to say, when we're looking at things, for me, back to MSI, connecting to what you're saying, I think that when you walk into a room and the vibe is there and the energy is there, it makes a difference. Yeah. And the word is, I guess you could say hosp hospitality is what my mom gave me as or virtue so whenever I have peers over I try to be the best host not for anyone else but for me because that's the way I would love to be treated if I'm going somewhere so regardless if you know them or not it's more so like this is my house you know would you like a drink would you like this but going back to your saying about energy or quote-unquote vibes I think that when we're looking in the grand scheme of things and we're working and we're getting things done we're propelling initiatives you're like oh my goodness you know how important it is to have a matching frequency, a matching vibe to be able to get your job done. Not because it's not impossible to do so, but it helps a lot, especially with your headspace and with what you're trying to um, convey to people. Yeah. So I want to get more in depth into that because I have like so many questions regarding production, but I guess you could say in short. And if you want to elaborate more so, it's just me and my curiosities at this point, but I have a follow up questions. When you're, and I'm a visual learner, so when you're like, when you're doing your production and you're seeing people watching your, you know, your work, what is it that you want them to feel? Um, that's a good one. I, I think it's different for every show. Like, for this one that I'm working on, like, mm -hmm. Real Women Have Curves, it's a play about these five um, Latin American women who are given an impossible task to meet and the play explores a lot of themes of like body positivity women empowerment um uh unity and all that stuff so, because it's an all women cast and so the goal that i have in mind when it comes to putting this together is when the audience comes in i just want them to one i want them to know that this cast enjoyed the show mm -hmm. because if there's one thing that an audience will immediately identify is if the cast and team that was involved in this production actually enjoyed it. I've seen shows where the love or the joy was just taken away from it and mm -hmm. they're just doing it to do it. But for this one, I guess I, I want audience, like people, like if they come see it, um, to just feel that joy and feel that warmth of being like, wow, like this, pe these people actually enjoyed working, this sh working on the show. Um, so when it comes to shows like these that are like, that's comedy, that's like a comedy drama, but mostly comedy, I just want them to enjoy it, like have a good time, to laugh, to enjoy, to be like, oh my God, I relate to that. Because there's so many things in that play that anybody could relate to, like the, you know, like those, the antics that we have at our own homes where it's, 
you know, those silly things that like only certain families can understand where it's like, yeah, my mom says the same thing like that too to me. Um, so it's just kind of more of like when it comes to the shows like that, like this one, it's just feeling the joy, being able to sit down and be like, oh, I'm really, I'm really excited to see this. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like how I was when I was like a little kid and I, or like even today when I like go see a movie or like go see a show, I'm like, oh, I'm getting excited and the lights go down and yeah. it feels like I'm strapping onto a roller coaster and it's like, it's that, it's that joy ride. Of course. Um, so that's always my goal. That's why I always like to pick shows that are like that. Like, I don't have an issue like picking really dramatic plays, but I've had a really good time like picking plays that are actually really empowering and really, really fun. And like, it, it, you know, there's so many stressors around the world. And the last thing you want to go, the last thing you want to do is go to a show and remind you of those stressors. Like, I would love for the audience to just come to the theater and sit down and just enjoy a show and like not think about you know things that worry them it's just here to enjoy it and just feel the joy definitely the essence of an escape i know that this is from one of my com classes the purpose of television sometimes it provides this relief entertainment yeah. and escapism if you will and I think that if that's your goal, I'm all in. Um, I'm definitely one to say that's what television does for me. More so on the end of um, kind of like you were describing the feeling that you feel when you're like happy or whatnot. I feel that with hairspray. So just saying, just saying, just saying. I, I know, I know we talked about it, but I, I just have to put that one in because as I literally, I have, I watched it like. 40 times, but anyways, the 2007 one, I know, I know it's not live, but I don't care. It's really nice for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what are some daily habits you practice to ensure your future? You talked about theater, you know, now you're doing your big debut per se. You're getting everything rolling. It looks like you're head uh, focused. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing now to ensure your future? Uh, interestingly, there's a quote, there, there was like a, uh, the department chair and I, we sometimes share quotes on a day-to-day basis, like, oh, sometimes. Nice. Shout out to uh, the department chair. Sure. Yeah, like, he's right there, and, like, I just walk by him, and I say good morning, and he says good morning. But I remember one thing that he told me, and it was that, like, even though the work I do here in the theater, like, exists, like, my work doesn't define who I am. Of course. Like, and so, to ensure my future, it's mm-hmm. always, like, finding the joy in the things that I do whether it is theater or whether it's being out with my family or being out with um with my friends or with our brothers like it it, it, for me like what i like to do to ensure my life is to always keep a balance between the things that i have and um and sometimes it requires making a tough choice but making tough choices doesn't always mean it's the bad one you know it just means that you have to prioritize something that's more important do i want to prioritize the relationships of the people that I care or do I want to prioritize a another paycheck so sometimes I'm I would be like you know what I haven't been with my, I haven't been with the people I care about in a long time there's always going to be another show there's always going to be another booking there's always going to be the business is continuously going like yeah. it's always continuously growing mm-hmm. but the relationships that we have with people Matters. Matters. Like, that's something you have to put in. That's something you invest. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Um, But it doesn't have to feel that (laughs) way when you... But it doesn't have to feel that way when you... When you care. When it's like... Of course. When it's authentic. When it's um, altruistic. uh, You know, without conditions. And... And I think that's kind of what the life I want to ensure is that at the end of the day, when I retire or when I'm not working, that like, you know... I can have a carne asada with my family or like with my brothers or with my friends like and that's the future that I want to have for myself you know he's touching, he's touching my soul yeah he's like scraping it like this like, but that's, that's, what true, I'm that's true that's what I'm like this is so good because it's yeah. true it's I true you. Yeah. like you know that's what you, it was something funny because like I asked my cast that question which is like what does success mean to you Mm. And a lot of them provided really, really cool answers that wasn't like a big mansion or a big car. Like one of them actually said that success is finally um, receiving the recognition you deserve or being or giving your flowers. Yeah, like it was something like that. Um, But I think it was just more in a sense of like, I finally have been able to establish myself and I'm happy that I got to do this. Of course. Um, another another one of my actresses said um, that 
it's being able to have everything you need. That's yeah. like uh, to have what you need, and you can live with that. Yeah. Because you can always get what you want later of on. Course. But what you need is, as long as you have that, that's success. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, like my necessities and my needs is just, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, I would just love to be with the people, like love to spend in the room with the people that I love, and being able to share those moments. And that's the goal I always try to do is like trying to be as active as I can with like the people in my life. Very insightful. That mm-hmm. one took a that one took a that one took me on a journey. You yeah. could you could keep talking, you know. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. The idea of having things, you know, for me, my tacos, my burritos, and my horchatas. Happy as I could be, but of course there's more, there's more. That's very there, superficial, but But what kind of what kind of me? Like a one. Honestly I'm just a regular degular. Um, I said because to me, as long as it has my beans, my rice, the carne que. That's gonna sound funny, but um, I don't know how you translate it in English, but uh, there's like tacos de cachete, yeah. <laughs> tacos de lengua, yeah, I mean, okay. tacos de cabeza, yeah. <laughs> tacos este del pastor. Yeah. I love chicken. So, anywho, that's a tangent that I could go on forever. That's just, <laughs> um, I yeah. love my food. Now, um, you know, we're talking about your career path. A lot of brothers, in this case, students in general, yeah. always have those moments where like, what? They have um, mental breakdowns, and if they're lucky, they'll just have like small crises, or they'll even be in the position where like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Beautiful, whatever the case may be, our purpose here today is to elaborate more so on your end. You know, Brother Bryant has a question about you know, providing reassurance that you chose the right major that's fit for you. So I throw you this question. It could be like an onion again, but however you, <laughs> however you want to provide details, you know, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, we, like if you were to walk into that theater, like into a theater building and ask somebody if they ever had doubts, it's always going to be that thing, you know, like in the theater industry or like even in the entertainment industry, there's always that imposter syndrome that exists and there's always that shrivel of doubt of like, am I doing the right thing? Like, is this really meant for me? Um, and I have those a lot too um, when it comes to the shows I'm working on or the classes that I'm in. Um, and so usually what I try to do is, um, I usually take that time because it's, it could either be one of two things. It for me is that one, I've been so invested in the work that I've that I've lost connection to myself, or I've lost connection to my my to my craft. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes the, the the two solutions that I try to do is like I. You know, I put a pause on my work and I spend time with my families or friends or whatever and I come back and and it's like it was it was just a passing thought or I was just feeling in the moment. And that's the thing, is that like I don't try to deflect it, I don't try to um, uh, keep it down. Like if I'm feeling stressed or if I'm feeling like anxious, then I just feel it, you know, I just accept it for what it is and I just um, evaluate on that. Other times, like, there, and there have been moments where I've had doubts about my own career, um, and it was mainly because, like, I just wasn't enjoying what I was working on or what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I would just go to another school and see their shows, mm-hmm. and, or go to another venue and see their shows, and that's where my spark comes back. Like, I remember, I, I remember last year, I was having a lot of doubts about my career, and a professor encouraged us to go see a show at UC Irvine. Mm. And it was a uh, West Coast premiere, uh, Rebecca Oaxaca, It's the Bunt. And it was an amazing show because like, it had a pretty dominant Latino cast, and it was very energetic, and the cast enjoyed it, and like, I really had a good time watching it. And when I was driving back home, like, one of the things that came to my mind was like, that's why I do it. Because, you know, I was so stressed about, about all these doubts and all these worries, and I come see a show and I leave it all behind and I laugh and I enjoy myself. I, I allow myself to be in that moment. And when the show is over and I step outside, 
all those doubts are gone and all, they were just gone and it was just like it was like I just needed to take a break yeah and that's usually what I do when I have those moments it's like I just stop what I'm doing and I just go search for the thing that will bring me back will bring me back to to earth reality <laughs> yeah back to love back to love <laughs> yes that's the song that I like coming back to life coming back to reality that's what we do just like we did right now you know <laughs> we're coming back now those are the questions that our brothers have been able to provide. I want to give them, though, obviously, um, their flowers. Uh, Brother Bryant, Brendan, Joel, eh, Carrie, John, and Eric. Thank you for your questions. I definitely had a blast asking them. I definitely want to wrap up with two more questions. One of them is going to be more in depth, and the next one was about you. Uh, the first one, I would say definitely the, the can you elaborate? and emphasize the importance of representation in these um, productions? Yeah, so for me, like, there's always two different types of <clears throat> representations that I see. There's always um, people that select big productions that involve like, a big cast, and then they diversify it in some shape or form, and then be like, look, we can be we can be diverse. Like, you see this, and it's, and, and I, and some of us, and I know that I, I don't speak for many, but I know some of us are just kind of like, that's really impressive, that's nice. Like, you can pick a Shakespeare play and diversify it and call it a day. But for me, like, representation goes as far as picking the stories that are actually real, mm -hmm. that are actually raw in its emotions. And that's kind of why I picked um, Real Women Have Curves, because uh, when I read it, when it first came to me, like as I, it was shared to me by 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 a common friend, um, when she shared it to me, it, and I read it, I real like I saw its like emotional value of it. There was something beautiful to be told with it, and when I picked that show, there was a lot of students that wanted to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of students that you know that could that couldn't be a part of it because they have classes or they have work or they were casted in a show that they didn't want to be a part of, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And and that's when I, and that's, and then I remember I had conversations with people and that's when you realize that like, instead of like, instead of picking these shows that require such a big number of casts and then you, you know, include multiple identities and call it a day and say that's diverse, mm -hmm. you know, I hope yeah. that with this show, like, not only like this college, or, but all colleges can realize that we can accept, we can embrace these stories. Like, of course, you you have to execute it correctly with the right, with the right director, with the right people, and mm -hmm. like, and if you, we have the student body to support it, but it also, but it's like also just not being afraid to just embrace those stories and and just allow it to have its own space. Of course, because. Um, like I enjoy watching all the shows that we do here. Of I, I, you know, it's nice to see like, you know, like classmates of mine or colleagues that I've worked with to be in these like big casts and these big lovely shows. Um, but if there's one thing that like pro brought me a lot of reassurance with the one I'm working on is that those same people who are in these big casts, they, and 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 for context. You know, my show is in, in the big stages that we do here. My mm -hmm. show is actually in a very small venue that's like 11 feet and 15 feet. So it's a very small, intimate space. But from what I've heard from a lot of my peers is that mm -hmm. they really, really want to see this show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there's something about it that calls out to them. It's probably the themes that it explores or the fact that they can see themselves in this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what makes me really happy about picking a show that has representation because it's like, you know, the last, you know, we've done shows that explored, you know, different areas of like different backgrounds mm -hmm. and some of them were executed really perfectly and like the audience loved it and I enjoyed it. And there are other shows that just kind of missed, like just kind of missed it. It's a hit or miss. It was a hit or miss. and. The one and some of them were a lot of misses, and so when it comes. But to yours that, wasn't. 
surprisingly it wasn't I you know I, well not surprisingly like I, I knew that this show like had a lot of meaning for people of course and so it was and so I think it's just finding that finding the right shows like that have that meaning of and course. knowing that like that shows in the right hands because we've done shows that you know we've done shows where it was like it's a good title and then when you look at who's directing it it's like Ooh. Yeah, you know, because they know what's they might they already have an anticipation of what's gonna happen. Yeah, I definitely I think you, I think you could say they have an agenda, um, but I said because um, you know, I value what you're saying and I definitely see it. And uh, my question, the second one, adding to what you were just saying, uh, do you have tickets for MSI Brothers? <laughs> I don't at this moment. <laughs> like I. I, I don't make those rules. No, I know. No. So I'm going to encourage you to see if you're able to get some for us because we'd definitely like to, now that we heard it, he, see it in person. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm going to put that pressure on you because pressure builds diamonds. Um, hopefully, you know, some of our brothers will be uh, <laughs> more than happy to attend. I know I definitely will be there. Um, I love seeing this. This is what I do, storytelling. And I love meeting people. And this is exactly what the podcast is built for. You. And in this case, generally speaking, the brothers who are about to do their business in the real world. So, toodles to you. It's been definitely an honor having you and your time to be able to share with us your production, your work, and your initiatives. It doesn't go unseen. I definitely want to emphasize that because, you know, I do do my career path in communications, but this is definitely one for, you know, the books, especially then it's going to be in, you know, the, the actual presentation if you will so that's how my end do you have any w words for us uh, I <laughs> no, no. uh I <laughs> there's some postcards on the says breathless you know <laughs> no i don't have anything to say okay cool i mean that concludes our podcast today everyone my name is alan ruelas this is Oscar Garcia. Episode number two, y'all, and it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Hopefully, we'll see y'all very soon. And stay tuned. Make sure to sh uh, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, your, your regular YouTube haunt. And outside of that, y'all, we'll be seeing you very soon. Bye.